you're actually on season seven of The Shot. Yes, sir. One of my favorite shows. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've been watching every season. I haven't, I haven't gotten a chance to catch up to this season because I've been so busy. But up to this point, yeah. you know, with, uh, you know, what's his name getting killed yeah. last season and so forth. I've been watching the whole time. My man, Jason Weaver, is actually oh, on that dude, show. good man. Good dude, bro. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, I remember he mentioned to me because when I interviewed him, you know, people like to bash Vlad TV and say, oh, everyone goes to jail after doing Vlad TV interviews. But in, in his, in, oh. you know, in his case, when we did our interview and he talked about how, um, you know, when he did the Lion King, when he yeah. like did the Simba songs and everything, yeah. they offered him a flat fee, but his mom refused and demanded that he get a percentage of the movie instead, Damn. which over time ended up being way bigger. Wow. Okay, so you turned down the $2 million deal. Yep. So you took less money with the royalties. Absolutely. Was it like a million bucks or do you remember how much it was? No, it was relatively low. I think it was like, I think it was like a hundred thousand. You went from two million to a hundred thousand. Yep. In order to get royalties. So you could play the long game. Wow. Cause that cause honestly. Okay. And let me ask you okay. a question before before you you know you go on. Mm-hmm. Were you offered anywhere near two million to play Michael Jackson? Hell no. <laughs> How much was that check back then? Ooh. Oh, that one was like I think I only made like eighty thousand. Okay, so you're making, and that was your biggest check, I'm sure, to the in your career at that point. Yeah. Right. As yeah. a 13 year old or whatever. Absolutely. So you go from eighty thousand, which is cool, cool. but it's not. It, yeah. You're not buying like, a Ferrari with eighty thousand. Hell no. Nah. To being offered two million up front, and your mom was smart enough to turn that down. Absolutely. Shout out to my mother. No, I mean. You. So you gave up one point nine million dollars at that time. At that time. At that time, yeah. Wow. Because it was in her opinion, she and she she's absolutely right. Because honestly, that income, that residual income that I generate, man, that shit is so helpful. Okay. So like even nowadays, like, man, when I get in a check from the line account, I'll be like, fuck. Yes. Did you make more than 1.9 million over time? Over time, yes. And this clip went so viral that a bunch of people started calling him for TV roles. Wow. And The Shy was one of those roles. Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, wow. it, you know, you never know what happens when you do interviews and they start to go viral and they connect with people and everything else like that. So, Absolutely. congrats, man. Great show. Thank you, Great bro. Show. You know, that even that, man, again, this is a testament, you know, to Lena Waif, just being good to people. So, I met Lena maybe 10 years. She's the creator of The Shy. So, I met Lena 10 years ago at Sundance for a movie that we had did. I, did. I did a movie with John Boyega that had won Sundance, like 2013. So, and she had Dear White People. And for us, it was like, yo, let's let's work together. This is almost 11 years ago, but we kept in contact, kept showing love, kept being good to each other. It's never met, I've only met her once, but she's been like family via text and email and calls for the last 10 years. So she then, you know, it was her birthday. I sent her a birthday gift and she was like, yo, what about working on the shy? I'm like, I would love to. What's up? She was like, yeah, I got a role for you. I'm thinking that it'd be like one episode, you know, maybe two. And I get on set and working with her, Jacob Lattimore, you know, and it was just like, you know, Luke James. It was just like, oh, wow, this is, I never felt a set like this. I never, I never been a part of something that everybody feels like a family, you know, and this has been a beautiful feeling. So I was like, man. So she was like, yo, we love what you're doing. You want to stay for five episodes? I'm like, all right, cool, let's do five. Five turns into the whole season. So it's like, again, you never know what happens when you kill your job, you're prepared, and you got to be good to people, man. You got to be good to people because it's a testament to just nurturing a relationship over 10 years with someone who becomes one of the biggest writers and producers in Hollywood and now you know season seven and and, I, and the funniest thing too bro like I've been acting for 10 years and I've been on TV for for 10 years and this is the first time that I was able to smile on TV and it being a part of the shot so for me it's like this is a turning point because I've been always playing the guy that does XYZ this energy but now it's like I could kind of just let my guard down and be a different character and play, I'm playing a pastor. 
you know, from the streets to a pastor. You know what I mean? So it's been it's been beautiful, man. And I'm I'm excited for everybody to to watch season seven when it comes out because um yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely added some some dope sauce to it that's gonna be crazy. Well, your new album. Yes, sir. Which drops on November first. Yes, sir. And your new song is out. I love me some you. Yes, sir. Is out right now. But the new album is called In My Heart, In My Veins. Yeah. And like you mentioned earlier, it's a double album, half R and B, half Afro B. Yeah. Why the name In My Heart, In My Veins? So In My Heart is basically the love of R and B, the love of that soul for music. I grew up listening to Carl Thomas, Genuine. Um, Kenny Lattimore, Michael Jackson, Lauren Hill. So like, you know, I, I grew up with that energy, you know, but then I also grew up and also who I am as a man in my veins is Nigerian blood. So I grew up listening to Fela, Bob Marley, all of these, you know, vibes. So I was like, let me just do my fans a solid, man, instead of this sporadic posting and and one song of this and one song of that, because I'd post a, a really tribal African record type of style and my R&B fans, it wouldn't connect. So I'm like, how can we solve this? And we were like, yo, let's just give each side their own project, you know? And so now that they have their own project, if you love my R&B, out of curiosity, knowing that there's nine other songs, you're going to go check out the Afro B. If you love the Afro B, you're going to go check out. And so for me, I know that um, I'm very rare that I can do that. And I know that it's quality music. I know that um, not many people can do what I do and I have to display that, you know, like in all humility, I believe and I know I'm one of the most talented human beings on this earth and it's now time to show it, you know, and so we displayed it with this project where nobody can say any different. They're going to be able to say, yo, you got to check out that Rotimi album, bro, like and again, I don't mind if people love one record on the R&B or one on the Afro, as long as it affects you. And plus you're getting a visual to every song. And plus you're going to get like a schedule of when those songs come out. You know, we're not doing it the traditional way of put a record out, let's go first week numbers. Nah, man, we're going to work this project. You know, every two weeks, every 15 days, a new video will come out. Every 15 days, a new behind the scenes will come out. So you're working an album for six, seven months with new content every time. So doing these, doing these amazing, you know, interviews with you, bro, and 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 just keeping the project alive and and during this time, it's not been done before. And I and I and I hang my hat on it. Shout out to my brother Punch, you know, because we've created something that, you know, I'm pretty sure that the world is gonna want to steal. So I'm I'm glad. <laughs> Well, it's, you, you saw it here first. Well, yeah, I mean, for 10 years, I've been saying that I don't understand why every artist, when they drop an album, doesn't do a music video for every song. There it doesn't go. make any sense. And I've been saying this, you could go through my interviews a decade back. Wow. I don't care if you film a video with your iPhone. I'm not yeah. saying get, you know, Director X Absolutely. to do every video. Absolutely. You know, do something and create a visual for everything so people could see the vision of what you have behind the song, because at that point you're just double dipping. You'll Absolutely. you'll have the streaming side on Spotify and Apple, yes. then you'll have the YouTube side. Yes, because you know the audio on YouTube will never react the same way as a video on yes. YouTube. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. So why wouldn't you shoot a video? Yes. for every project, you're just leaving money on the table, as far as I'm concerned. And and we understood that. You know, again, like we understood that creatively, why not give them? Yeah, you got to spend your own money, but yo, the payoff is gonna be. You know, because I remember I was I had a conversation with um, with uh, Jay Prince a years ago, and he I was like, "Yo, bro, as a, as a real estate man and, and the way you work, money like, what do I need to invest in?" And he was like, "Why are you trying to put money over here and here and here? The first thing you should invest in is yourself. If you got two hundred thousand dollars, bro, put two hundred thousand dollars into yourself." And I never forgot that, you know. And so for me, it was like, all right. Well, we got the bread. Let's 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 run it up and let's shoot different videos and create different moments, create long lasting moments that will outlive the extension of the project and just go crazy. And now you've given us seven months of time to work a project, one project. So, you know, it dropped today, but today we view it as the first day of our album, not a single, you know? Well, it's also what's interesting is that 
none of the songs have features. None, none. And you did that on purpose. Absolutely, absolutely. So we were getting calls from different people and it was just like, yes, however, we're in the phase of show who you are. I don't want it to be, and maybe it's a little ego or whatever, but I don't want it to be where it's like that song was hot because of, nah. I don't want it to be like, yo, let's use their algorithm. No. <laughs> you're going to rock with it, and you're going to rock with it. Then when it comes out at that particular time, then we can get a feature if it's doing what it needs to do. But this is a statement project, bro. Like, it's we're doing everything different. It's not to, I want to I wanna show that, yo, like, we're different over here. You know, we have the album of the year. 